Okay, so first big project of rain delay. Catch up on paperwork. Got spray record scanner, bank statements to catch up on, YouTube to upload. It's all in a all in a day's work, right? All right, so something else I've been doing is checking on crops. We still got a lot of forage sorghum standing. But then we've also got a lot that's been swathed and baled. As you can see this pile right in front of me. There's 170, I think, in this pile. <clears throat> I think that's the number they told me. So the guys, everyone on the farm, they've been they've been working real hard while we've been distracted with silage. We've got 200 acres of forage sorghum swathed and baled. Starting to get some wheat planted and growing. There's there's a lot going on. We've had two or three hay fields swathed and baled since we started. Normally there'd be a lot more in the two weeks that we've been chopping. But with our weather this year being what it was, there wasn't a whole lot growing. We actually had a bad infestation of bugs move in. It became a decision of spray the bugs to preserve what little bit of hay is out there but we have a lot of farms that we're like you know for the for the price of spraying versus the yield we're going to get with limited water it wasn't worth it so we actually just let the bugs have the fields there's i don't know off the top of my head 100 acres that i know of that the hay was developing it needed it needed a lot of water not a little water and that was the problem so we we elected not to spray them you go by now and it looks like we swapped it last week we sprayed 200 250 acres of hay well we didn't spray we had an aerial applicator spray it insecticide is one thing i i don't mess with just because of the hazards of dealing with it I, I'm okay with herbicide but insecticide I don't want to do so an aerial applicator did all that I'm gonna go keep checking on some fields and then I'll try and swing by the shop and show you what we've been doing in there so one thing I'm doing with these rain outs is catching up on how the cattle herd is doing <clears throat> the boys are looking good Looking real good. Them guys got to be about ready to go. These ones are still good. 100 pounds off fish being ready to leave. So yeah, I've been driving through all the corrals, checking up on them, seeing how they're looking. There's another big stack of forage sorghum bales, feed bales. This all came off of 30 acres. There's quite a few there. Needless to say, our, our yield on our forage sorghum is doing pretty nice. All right, on to the next group of bins. All right, so I've talked about the paperwork, checking fields. The other thing we've been doing is working on equipment. So here is my 9800. Now, wait, let me, let me take a quick second here. I hope it's not dark enough or too dark to see me. Every piece of equipment here is owned by the corporation Mock Farms. But we all have our pieces of equipment as we call it. I have the 9800, Glenn has the 8700. I have the 2290 Baylor, Bart and Hector are the 2190. Each guy has a truck. Aaron has a truck, Cody has a truck, Hector has a truck, Chuck has a truck. So everyone has their stuff. So I say a lot of the time, you know, my 9800 are my chopper i don't own this the corporation owns this but it's the piece of equipment i run so everyone considers it you know their piece of equipment so we put on new blades mine were pretty shot already it's one of those things usually a set of blade we go through two if not three a year so this is set number two for me 
I uh, did a little tweaking on a sensor down there for the header tilt sense. A, built, a bolt had broke off. The other problem I had when I was opening up, I was having trouble. The flow out of the tube, you want it to be real packed and, you know, let me point it actually at the tube up here. So the flow coming out of the spout, you want it to be real compact and tight. So that way you can really control it in the truck. Well, mine the last couple days had been kind of spreading out and we thought we had a liner wearing because that's usually a telltale sign that your spout liners are shot because that spray spreads. Well, what it actually was that we can find, you see all the teeth here on the pivot point. We had quite a few that were broken off. There was one on the bottom here, one on the top there, one on the top there broken so when I would unfold that the hydraulic pressure when the two missing teeth would line up would force this side down and it was catching crop flow we are assuming that is what was screwing up the crop flow because we cannot find a spout liner in there with any problem so the 9800 it's it's ready to go let's go over to the blue shop show you the 87 and the trucks so here is the 8700. We got the oil changed. Working on the harvest lab up there. We bought this thing a year ago. Well, we had it for wheat lidge. So we've had it for wheat, corn, wheat, now corn. So this is our fourth crop through it. That harvest lab has yet to work. Still working on it. We were going to change the blades, but these ones are actually still have some pretty good bite on them. And then, as you'll notice, we got trucks in here. So we got baby blue. This one, the only problem with it is hold downs for the batteries on the other side. Batteries are under the step cover on the other side. Not a big problem. It is Wednesday. They will be here Friday coming from Kenworth. The Navajo, which we call it that because this used to be Navajo truck lines. It was a truck we bought at auction years ago. You can still see the pinstripe, old pinstriping there on the hood. So this is Aaron's truck. As you can see, the front axle is not connected to the spring at the moment. What happened was dealing with sprinkler tracks. You can imagine you're going along and this wheel hits a track hard. It's going to put quite a bit of jarring effect on that whole assembly. Well, the studs that go through to hold everything in place had broke, and the axle had actually shifted back on this side a couple of inches. And here's, here's more of it. So we are waiting on new parts for that. Hopefully be here Friday as well pulled the bunk blower in just in case the big chief wants to blow out the bunks in the morning i don't know i don't we're roughly at a quarter of an inch of moisture over the last 48 hours so i don't know if he'll want to do that or not but then you look out back here so you can see the t800 that's cody's truck the green t6 and the white t6 beside it those three all got grease today so we've got three silage trucks ready their trailers minor adjustments they're ready then we gotta get one of these two out the door and ready to hook up to trailer number four it's the beauty of truck and silage you need five and if we get desperate we got the w900 on the cattle truck so we got six trucks to run four trailers god love silage harvest right and with that, that kind of covers all of our rainy day activities.